We got surface news. We got ignite news. And we just we just got a lot of news to talk about. Happy Friday, friends! Ooh, buddies Ooh, and gals. It was uh, it was a busy week, really busy week. So this week we had Microsoft Surface, we had Microsoft Ignite, and we just had news just flying in from every single different direction. We had Meta stuff. There, there was just a lot going on. So hopefully you had a wonderful week. I did, and uh, whew, let's let's just dive in because there's a lot of questions too. And let's go. Okay, kicking things off with Microsoft Surface Event, which we'll dive into some of the more commentary here in a second, but just the high level look at what is going on here. So Microsoft obviously announced the Surface Pro 9, the iconic device that really just is Surface. When you think Surface, you more than likely think Surface Pro. And so they are smashing together their Pro X line and their traditional Pro line. So now it's just called the Pro 9 and that gives you ARM, that gives you Intel options, no AMD options really across the board. But either way, the basic breakdown is that the Intel version starts at $1,000, the ARM version starts at $1,300, and they're very similar are very similar until you get into the details and honestly the details here are really important as an example if you want 5g connectivity well you're only going to be able to get the arm version which has the sq3 processor if you want just basic wi-fi and intel chips 5g is not an option but the intel chip is a 12th gen and so you should get relatively good performance and battery life out of that Effect very similar displays, but the Intel display does have Dolby Vision and color management, whereas the Pro 9 ARM does not. But the Pro 9 ARM does have a better webcam that supports Microsoft Studio effects like background blurring and some other stuff like that. The Intel version has two USB-C ports and supports Thunderbolt 4. The ARM version has two USB-C ports, but they're USB 3.2 without Thunderbolt. Also, the Pro 9 5G has this new fancy AI chip. You might see a demo floating around of Microsoft using this thing on a stage with a leaf blower in the background and somebody talking on a chat, and there's no background noise. And it does this without uh, zero impact on the CPU or zero impact on the GPU because they put a new chip on the board that really is designed for AI and takes advantage of that, and that's Microsoft showing it off. Why that's only on the ARM version is a little frustrating but maybe they were trying to find different ways to differentiate something like that. Either way, uh, that product is now available. And so you can also, there's a new color called, I believe it's called Sage Green. The green version looks really good. Typically I'm not a green kind of guy unless it's like on an Xbox or something, but this green, it looks pretty good. Uh, Surface Laptop 5 was also announced. So it's gonna have 12th gen Intel, 13 and 15 inch flavor, starts at 999 for the 13 uh, and 1300 for the 15 inch. That's a little confusing. The most disappointing thing about this is that they're dropping the AMD version, which is a little odd because Panos like, shared a picture on Instagram of him and Lisa Sue together, and now AMD is no longer really an option in the Surface portfolio. So that's the Surface Laptop 5, nothing too exciting there. And then there is the Surface Studio 2 Plus. And this thing is a car crash of disappointment because it's an 11th gen Intel processor on the inside. It's a 3060 GPU, but it's the laptop iteration. The display is 60 Hertz. It does support Dolby Vision, but my friends, this thing starts at over $4,000 dues, $4,000. I honestly cannot recommend the Surface Studio 2 Plus to anybody. I don't know why, I don't know why you would buy this thing. It's unless you're like married to the form factor, which the form factor is nice. I'm not disputing that. It's just the guts of it are just a train wreck of disappointment. And there you go. You can go for more money than I spent on my first car. You can go buy a Studio 2 Plus if that's uh, something you really want. I, I don't know. Uh, other couple of things I did announce was this USB team speaker. So if you remember that USB little like flat looking speaker thing, they have a new version. It's like a dock. Uh, or like audio dock, I think they call it, surface audio dock, whatever. Um, it's now available. There's a more interesting, at least to me and probably many others, there's now a remote pointer thing. That's the only way I can describe it without actually showing you a picture, which for audio people wouldn't matter. Anyways, either way, it's a, it's a pointer and it allows you to control teams while you're on a call. And that is actually in presentations and other things. And so that's actually really helpful, because especially if you're somebody like me who likes to use their hands when they're talking, uh, that's actually helpful. Put in your hand, mute your mic, that sort of thing, advanced slides, that sort of stuff. That is actually pretty darn useful. Now, those are the big highlights from the Surface event. I will tell you, friends, this was pretty, this is pretty mute for a Surface event. It really just, it really honestly felt like that 
many years ago, Surface was this passion project, that Surface was something we had to fight and win. And now that they're kind of here and it's 10 years on, it's really, they're just going through the motions at this point. And it's like, here's the stuff. I think they intentionally did this on the day of Ignite because they knew this event was just going to be meh. Um, I, I don't really expect them to come out and do anything crazy, but I, there's, it really just doesn't feel like they're trying to push boundaries anymore, which is what Surface was supposed to be. I mean, you look at the Studio 2 Plus and like the form factor is great, but then they just give up on the inside. And the Pro 9 is exactly what you would expect a Pro 9. I don't think there's too much going on there. But then the Laptop 5, it's like a, that, the, the defining feature of the Laptop 5, besides being just a vanilla laptop, was it introduced AMD options. And for people who don't like Intel, AMD was a, is a great choice, and especially what AMD is doing lately. And now that's gone. And so at 1000 bucks for the Surface Laptop, it, there are better options out there. Unless you just really want a basic, no-thrills vanilla laptop, then maybe it fits the bill. But it just kind of feels like they're just like, okay, okay, here's this year's Toyota Camry. Let's just keep moving on. Uh, I, I don't know. It just felt like some of the passion has, has left the room, if you will, with all of this. And so there you go. Now, Ignite. Microsoft Ignite is typically one of my favorite times of the year because Microsoft will just throw the spaghetti at the wall. They will throw everything. Everything is coming out of the woodwork. So Kicking things off at night, Microsoft is rebranding uh, Office. So if you're familiar with the Office brand, just don't. And just know that everything is moving to Microsoft 365. There's a new app that's replacing the Office apps. They're just starting to put everything under that umbrella that Microsoft 365 is superseding Office. And that Office is, I don't, I don't want to say they're devaluing Office because it's such a powerful brand for the company. But Microsoft 365 is what it is. And uh, there's new apps coming. Uh, they're coming to everywhere. And I believe they're going to start showing up here in November. Interestingly, Microsoft is expanding its collab functionality with the tabs in Microsoft Edge. I can't say I saw this one coming, although there were some leaks about it. So I guess maybe I did. But Microsoft is working on a way to share tabs with a group and that you can collaborate inside of a tab. Now, that sounds kind of ridiculous because like, why would we collab on Google search results or something like that? But you could imagine you're running Figma in a browser. You can running something else in a browser. And that actually makes a bit more sense to be able to do that. And with everything going towards the web, being, having, being able to do this is actually probably a pretty big deal this one definitely feels more forward looking than back because i can't ever really say it's impacted me but that doesn't mean like you know i'm an end value of one and so i can certainly see the use case for something like this and it, it actually sounds kind of neat uh the other massive thing that microsoft announced is microsoft designer and this is microsoft taking on canva now they're including 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 doll e uh 2.0 i believe it's dolly 2.0 it's dolly 2 so i guess it could be whatever it flavor inside of that uh functionality inside of this it's in private preview so you can't access it but it's going to be a way to design things taking on the canvas i think figma a little bit figma is obviously its own sort of brand and caliber of stuff uh but microsoft designer will be coming the company has also announced teams premium by my account i think microsoft this might be the one of the second or maybe third time microsoft has tried to add like a team's premium like lineup and get people to pay for it and clearly every time it's failed but this one actually seems like there is some good stuff in there so it's going to include live captions live translations advanced webinar functionality virtual appointments with branded lobbying experience and post appointment follow-ups and other features and so that's actually a lot uh, the live translations and live captions and that sort of stuff is actually incredibly valuable for the right for the right demographic, obviously. And Microsoft doesn't think everybody's going to be buying Teams Premium, but they are starting to really just toss a lot of stuff into Teams, the, the, the premium tier, if you will. And I think they'll get more people to jump over that hoop now. Uh, company has also announced Mesh Avatars are launching again in Private Preview. Private Preview is sort of the theme of Ignite. I'm not, whatever. If you're a fan of these mesh avatars, that's great. And I'm happy for you. They're not really for me. To me, they feel a lot like 3D TV sort of thing, like metaverse sort of stuff. It's whatever. Microsoft is clearly making investments, making sure they're not left out of the conversation. But mesh avatars, if that's what you've been staying up at night about, uh, Microsoft will soon have that uh, available. Uh, Microsoft is also rebranding SharePoint Syntax, not Syntax, but Syntax to Microsoft Syntax. This is again, them pulling like a branding outside of uh, like an office specific SKU to the whole company. And so we'd be on the lookout for that branding. It's not a typo. That is it. Now, the most disappointing news out of Ignite is loops. No loops for you because much like everything else really announced at Ignite, it's in private preview. 
<sighs> so Microsoft Loops, they even showed off new Loop components. And for people who I, I know who have access to Microsoft Loops, it is, people seem to like it. They like where it's headed. And maybe they just need to get all things lined up before they launch it and whatever. It's in private preview. So you can go to the Microsoft Loops website. You can go to the Creators website. You can go to the Mesh website. And you can all get lined up in line. Lined up in line, obviously. A thing the Brits love to do, get in a queue. And one day they will let you in. They say it's coming soon, but as of right now, nobody. I'm, I'm not allowed in Loops. And that makes me sad because I really, really want to give it a try. So there you go. There were also a bunch of security related announcements. There are new features coming to purview insider risk management, information protection, and data lifecycle management. Microsoft really going all in on that purview branding. Uh, Sentinel now has a low cost option for ingesting and archiving logs of data. Audit search has been revamped with a faster and reliable, uh, more reliable search index. And there's now a low cost IP protection for Azure DDoS protection. So uh, just that's sort of rounding out the Ignite. There is even more stuff being announced in sessions. And so if you're really interested in that stuff, go dive into Ignite because there's there's a ton of stuff coming out of Microsoft. Now, even more related stuff to Microsoft this week, Windows 11, uh, iCloud Photos and Apple TV and Apple Music are coming to Windows 11. So that will be good, especially for people who are building home theaters in a box. So if you're sort of that Plex user having apple tv and apple music and apple photos all on windows 11 is a good thing we're still all waiting for imessage but we'll keep holding our breath also microsoft showed off a screen recording tool built into snipping tool this is a big request I, there's already sort of a quasi screen recording tool right in the xbox game bar but now it looks like the snipping tool will have a record button and you'll be able to record a fragment of your or a section of your screen i'll be i'm hoping but this is going to be the most microsoft thing ever i'm hoping that you can save it as a gif like that's that's the big win if you can save it as a gif and not an mp4 but knowing microsoft you'll get mp4 and if you want a gif you got to use a third party tool which there's a ton of, uh, of screenshotting tools out there, and this is obviously going to cut into their market share. So, like, part of me is like, man, you think about TechSmith and, like, companies like ShareX, and it's like, you want them to survive, but then Microsoft just builds their functionality into Windows, and then they're kind of screwed. Uh, speaking of building functionality into Windows, Microsoft absolutely and accidentally showed off Windows 12. I have this image pulled up here. So you can actually see yourselves, my friends. This is Windows 12. If you're on the audio version, I do apologize. You'll have to check out the YouTube version. But this is Windows 12. And um, Windows Central was able to confirm it. I've been able to confirm it myself that this was an accidental showing of what Windows 12 is potentially going to be like. It's a mock-up, but it, it's a, a vision mock-up of where they like to take it. Now, there's some massive changes here. In a nutshell, top left corner, you will see widgets. Top right corner, you will see the system tray bottom you will notice that the taskbar is floating it is floating with no system tray no widgets no ungrouped icons just as it is in the image it's just, microsoft is supposedly going to be trying to align this to a common ui across all of their devices where they have this floating taskbar and it looks like they're going to be doing it in windows so we will see what happens here my friends we will see what happens so, uh, jumping on over to the gaming news, uh, Apple Music, if that's your jam, is now available on Xbox consoles because it's available on the Windows 11. It's also available on the consoles now. Uh, the new Alpha Skip Ahead build brings 30% bitrate boosted to the DVR. There's been a lot of complaints, myself included, about the DVR functionality built into Windows, or to Windows, into the Xbox. It, it is not good, and so it looks like Microsoft is now working to improve it. Hopefully, they'll make the editor a lot easier and just make it just make it more fast and fluid to, to steal an old i think it was that windows 8 fragment fragment tagline so it does look like it's finally getting attention and mr phil spencer also this week also accidentally you know accidental is kind of theme of the week here with windows 11 and now phil spencer showing off a keystone demo or uh <laughs> prototype now keystone if you're not familiar with that code name is the device that allowed streaming you just connect it right into your tv and allowed streaming only of xbox content they, Microsoft claims this is an early prototype. I got to tell you guys, even if it is, quote unquote, an early prototype, what does that even mean? First off, it's it's complete enough that it feels like I'm putting this thing on my shelf. I bet it's close enough to the final spec. Anything can be an early type, early prototype until it ships. But I would bet that it is uh, pretty close to that because that's just kind of the way things work in the world. Uh, the Xbox app is also now native to ARM64, so if you've got an ARM-based device, I'm sure there's a few of you listening who do, you can now use that Xbox app as it is natively. 
Whew. And finally, there was a Metaverse event where they showed off teams and everything else, but Xbox game streaming will work with the MetaQuest uh, devices coming up. Now, granted, it works, but there's really no beneficial benefit game. It honestly just looks like the PWA just running inside a frame inside of the Metaverse, uh, and that's Meta's thing. It gets confusing, and that's probably why they did that branding change there. But either way, it does now. It will work uh, when that does come out. So... That's a lot of news, my friends, wrapped up in a nutshell. Now, let's dive into the questions of the week. Always my favorite part. Eisner says, long time no ask. Two cues for today, Brent. Surface reliability is absolutely miserable. All three Surface devices I've owned, RT, Book, Laptop 2, as well as my two mom's device, a Pro 5 and another device, all have had horrific battery performance and degradation after about a year, seemingly much faster than other OEMs I've used. Why does this seem to be the case? This is such an odd one. There's definitely... There's definitely been quality issues within the service brand. There is no question about that. Now, the, where I, I struggle a little bit is I haven't personally been impacted by these, so it's hard to say why this is happening because like, I can't triage a device that I don't have that's, that has low battery performance. It's interesting, though. There's definitely been people who have had their own issues, and they seem to be grouped into, I'm guessing, allotments of coming off the assembly line that Microsoft's QA, which we all know about their QA process, may not just may not be as good as what it used to be that's the only thing i can think of which is why when people say what device should i buy especially with this generation like the pro 9 is pretty darn good but like the laptop 5 i would there's many other better devices from lenovo hp dell xps 13 is a fantastic device that i would likely recommend before going that before going the laptop have you just get more bang for your buck and and so i think the intel pro 9 uh is the only device honestly in the surface lineup right now that anybody should realistically consider the second question is, what is the hard computer science problem behind both Windows 11 and Start 11 not allowing left aligned start button and center aligned set of icons? So, uh, Start 11 does allow center aligned set of icons. So, the latest version of Start 11 we allowed allows you to put the start menu in the center. Now, there are one, so there's a lot of challenges with the left aligned. So, as an example, right now, all the transitions inside of Windows are designed for bottom place start menus. Second, Microsoft introduced XAML Islands. So, this is how we think uh, at Stardock, Microsoft might be moving that start or the system tray to the top. They've put the system tray in a XAML Island, which in theory, in theory, I'm not saying it can be done today, but in theory is the, the building blocks for being able to move the system tray. So, being able to put on the left line means you then have to suddenly change every single transition to support left aligned and vertically aligned movement, which Microsoft did not build for uh, Windows 11. They didn't build it. Now you're wondering why, well, like Explorer Patcher, that open source project can do it because they're not using Windows 11. They're actually just re-enabling Windows 10 bits to enable that functionality. So you're not getting actual Windows 11 code, per my understanding of how Explorer Patcher works, to enable that. So if we want to do that, we actually have to go build all those transitions for, for some of the stuff we've done. And from our vantage point, it's not quite there yet, the demand to invest the time, because it's a significant effort, because one of the primary differences with Start 11 is that we built a lot of the functionality rather than re-enabling it. Now, there's reasons why we did it that way. I'm not going to get into that, but that's that's like sort of getting into it. But uh, with Start 11 1.3, you can now... You can now replace the start menu with any menu you want and have it centered and change that icon. That was uh, only on 22H2, though, because the insider stuff is... Uh, very hard to support because it changes weekly sometimes. And so we we officially only support retail builds. Jay Herdia says, just a simple question. Do you know if or when it will actually be possible to order that limited edition Surface Pro 9? My wife, an artist, loved it, but I can only find the type cover for pre-order. I haven't actually seen. I, this is the second question I've got about where you can pre-order that limited edition model. Uh, it does look awesome. Microsoft, that's... Microsoft uh, teamed up with an artist to design. It's like a floral arrangement. It's really well done. If you haven't seen, it's like a light blue-ish color. It's really well done. I haven't seen anywhere where you can order it yet, but if somebody does find it, please drop a link in the description below, or the comments, I should say. Uh, T182, is there any really demand for Xbox streaming device? That is a fantastic question uh, because <laughs> the answer might actually be no, and Microsoft might have even, even have told us. So, Earlier this week, the company, not even the company, but the documents related to the Brazil and the UK acquisition have kind of come out. And Microsoft in, I believe it's actually the UK documentation, if I remember correctly, actually said streaming demand is actually very low. It's very low. And maybe that's why Microsoft isn't launching the Keystone device, because it is, in fact, very low. We all know that Stadia did not survive 
and uh, Microsoft, as I continue to say time and time again, their streaming service is just a feature. It's not a product unlike Luna and what Stadia was. And I think that's the right approach because according to Microsoft's own data, it is actually, um, it's actually <laughs> pretty low. So uh, his other question, he says, has Stardock considered making just a junk free Chrome web browser? Uh, <laughs> and he goes on to say, because all the ed team just keeps putting junk, more and more junk in. No, we haven't decided to ever consider building a browser. First off, there's a lot of browsers out there based on Chromium. Brave would be a good solution if you're if you're thinking about going that route. We don't have a big enough team to support uh, building out a browser full time, and that's a whole another can of complexity that we would have to hire up for. And can I don't I'm not quite sure what our benefit would be from Stardock's perspective. Like, okay, so we launch a free browser. That's great. We we help out the community. We we put product out there. That's that's a good thing. But at the end of the day, okay, so I've got to hire 10 engineers to go support this thing. How do we how do we monetize that? And then that gets into a really bad situation because we're not a company that makes money off of ads. Like we don't do advertising. Um, we just sell licenses. And so I, I don't think it's for us, I, I, at least as of right now. I never say never, but as of today, right now, we're not, we, we don't have a large enough staff to support that. We're chasing down our own um, product lines, getting them all revamped and everything else. <clears throat> Will R says, Brad, do you think they'll put an SQ3 chip in the Surface Go 4? Mm, no, I don't. Because that's a, as of right now, despite Microsoft's best efforts of telling you that the ARM version of Windows is completely compatible with everything that happens in the world of Windows, the reality is it's really not. And I don't think we're going to see it quite yet. Uh, he says, on that same topic, any idea if the SQ3 chip will be on more devices like a Surface laptop? No. I do know Microsoft does have an ARM version of the laptop, but... Keep it, keep in this mind, uh, keep this in mind. The Volterra desktop PC that is a dev, dev, dev box hasn't even shipped yet. Like it's supposed to be coming this month, but they didn't even talk about it on stage. And so it's like, woof, we didn't even get any update on that. And uh, here we are. So uh, also is the AMD Surface line dead? It does kind of sound that way. So we don't quite know what Microsoft is doing. We don't, their relationship with AMD clearly isn't dead because the Xbox is based. AMD does a lot of work for Microsoft on the Xbox side. And so we just kind of got to wait and see. Let's see. Mr. PKI says, since you are an accounting and economic expert, I, I have an undergraduate degree in accounting, no economic degree, but um, I thought it'd be a good, <laughs> I thought I would give you a challenging homework question this week. Xbox Game Pass for console made approximately $2.9 billion in revenue in 2021. If you break that down on a, on a per game basis, that is Game Pass. How much revenue does the average publisher get for their inclusion in Game Pass on an annual basis? We can't, we will never know this question. Uh, mostly because I know from, I know from experience and just everything out in the world from developers publishing this information, not all deals are created equal. Some developers get, get a whole bunch of money to put their stuff on there. Like you could imagine like Red Dead Redemption 2, like when that's in Game Pass, I'm sure they're getting a lot more than an indie title who is just going in there launching on day one. And so all these contracts are independent and it's pretty much hard to back it up. I actually did go down the path of trying to figure out how much revenue per Xbox Game Pass user is being generated. But even that gets really dicey because of people who are prepaying and we can't quite actually back out the numbers. And Microsoft knows that intentionally. As of right now, there's about 25 million, at least per Microsoft's last published uh, documentation that they have about 25 million Game Pass subscribers. We know that number should be higher. They're dropping a bunch of titles this week, like Scorn, that should be really boosting that stuff up. Uh, but yeah, as of right now, we can, that number would be great, but it's a per per title thing, and so that's a it's a good question. The the really the big question I want to know is Phil Spencer has said Game Pass is sustainable. I don't know if he's ever said it's profitable, and so I would love to know if Game Pass is actually on its own making a profit. I would guess that maybe not, but maybe they see a path to it. Migi says, do you think the, do you think the partnership between Microsoft and Facebook could see meta VR on Xbox? No, I mean, I shouldn't say no, but I don't think so. The partnership he's referring to is this week when meta had their event, Sachin Nadella made an appearance and they're having teams available. I think even Outlook, which reading Outlook in a 3d environment sounds worse than reading it in a 2d environment, but either way, Microsoft is really putting their hardware and so or their software, I should say, where a lot of hardware is happening. They're also doing it with Cisco. Cisco, I believe, announced that Teams is going to be the, de the default platform for communication going forward, which is massive because they have their own WebEx platform. And so uh, I don't, I, I'm not sure if we'll see Meta, the VR world on 
Xbox. That's my personal opinion. And he says, what's your input in <laughs> what's your opinion about the incomes generated by Game Pass in 2021? 2.9 billion is not an insignificant amount of money. I mean, that's we'll just round up for easy conversation. Three billion dollars in 2021 dedicated directly to that. But the problem becomes what I was hand, talking about with the Mr. PKI question is how much money do they have to spend to make three billion dollars? If they're making if they're spending five billion dollars to make three billion. That's not a great conversation. That math doesn't work. And Microsoft is then using everything else as a loss leader to try to make themselves win the market, which is a strategy. You can look at Uber as a very popular example who tried to do that. And I think, although Uber still has trouble with profitability, Microsoft clearly sees a path potentially getting Game Pass to being profitable if they aren't already. That's the, the big thing I want to know is, is Game Pass profitable? Not sustainable, not because that is the two that, that is that is mincing words about sustainability and profitability are two totally different things. And so, if Microsoft's spending five billion to make three billion, then how, you know where where do they see those lines diverging? Maybe after they get Call of Duty in there, then they see that really being the gasoline that's going to make all this happen. Uh, Matt O'Bear coming in says another week, another round of news of spicy hot takes coming out of the ABK deal. This week, the UK CMA regulatory body was accused by Microsoft for bias in Sony's favor. To put it simply, if things really come to a head in that region, what's the worst case scenario for Sony and Microsoft? This is a really interesting one. So imagine everybody else on the planet says, Microsoft, you can buy Sony or Sony. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. You can buy ABK. And the UK says, nope, you can't. I bet Microsoft would just ram it through and then they would deal with the UK separately and they would say whatever. I think that's probably the worst case scenario, but it very does much feel like the UK is in Sony's court, whereas Brazil was like, look, we're not here to protect Sony, we're here to protect the consumer. And UK CMA did try to argue that they are protecting the consumer, but at the end of the day, I, and granted, I probably have a biased view, but I think Microsoft's arguments are stronger. And Microsoft came out like really lashing at Sony this week, or Sony, micro, at the UK this week. Too many... Too many acronyms and titles involved. Second question from Matt Bear: The Keystone Xbox model that Phil Spencer teased was claimed to be an old prototype. Do you think that's really the case? I mean, define old. It could have been the last prototype before they started putting things into production. So technically it is old. Assuming this thing is real and not canned, will it release this holiday? I don't think it's going to release this holiday. I don't think, only because Microsoft has sort of headed off that they weren't planning to release it on their original schedule and that they were taking more time for this thing. Mostly because I think out of the UK documentation, as I noted previously, the game streaming is actually really low. And so this thing has to be like a rock bottom dollar pricing to get people interested in it. And we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. I would be surprised if it lands this holiday season. Uh, I hate passwords, it says. Do you think Western European countries will be more skeptical over the Microsoft uh, merger do the differences in political climates that's an interesting question uh, it, it's in theory you're supposed to come at it from a neutral perspective that's the whole point is that if you're a neutral entity reviewing this acquisition is it a good thing for the consumer or is it a bad thing for the consumer and so that's how it's supposed to be i don't think i, I don't know this one's this one's tough because we haven't really gotten much of a peep out of the u.s really looking at this too much from any definitive way and same with the eu uh, we've heard like little whispers but we haven't heard anything definitive yet come out about the deal and so really at this point we just got to wait a few more weeks i think michael martinez wrapping it up and says what is your best rationale for microsoft putting the surface studio 2 plus my best rationale and i am shooting from the hip here is that they had an order for surface book 4 guts or something like that and they said screw it we're going to go to the surface laptop studio route and they had all these parts that they needed to use and they said we'll just build a surface studio 2 plus out of what was going to be the surface book 4 parts because remember in this guy right here which is the book 3 all the important bits are up in here and so in theory maybe they could get they got them small enough so that they're really just using a similar style board that's in the laptop studio and that's the route they went other than that if that is not the case I don't honestly know because at uh and a court says at 4,500 bucks, roughly, uh, a newer chip would not only make the audience. Uh, at 4,500 bucks, a newer chip would have made a lot more sense. Yep. Uh, it, the, if this thing was 1,500 bucks, I think a lot of us would be snatching them up. But they're 4,500 bucks. And so it's a lot of dollar dues. It's a lot of dollar dues. And that's a lot of. A lot of content, my friends. If you made it to this point, you are a hero of the podcast. You're a hero of me personally. Either way, I don't know. I don't know why I'm going with that. Either way, uh, like I said, tons of news. And I think we've still got more on the horizon coming down the pipeline. So make sure to keep it subscribed here because the only BS on this podcast is me.